Well, 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 we're back again. We've got more Bloodborne stuff. Last week we finished off the Forsaken Kanehurst Castle expansion. Now we're focusing on the Hellish Chalice Dungeon expansion. Now this is a big boy expansion. It's got a lot of models. So we're going to do a quick run through of everything that is inside this Mama Jammer expansion. We get some rules, we get some boards, we get some cards, we get some stuff. But let's look at the minis because that's what we're here for today. We've got the beast possessed soul, beastie beastie boy. We've got the dog, hate dogs, hate dogs. We've got the keeper of the old lords. We've got the bell ringer, ding 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 ding. We've got the gravekeeper scorpion, little tiddly boy here. We also have four hunters. We have one here. We have a second here. We have a third hunter here. And we have a fourth, but I forgot to film him. We also have the ratty rat boys. We have the hunter dog, a weaponized dog. And we have the absolute bastard of the chalice dungeon. It is the watchdog of the old lords. What a frightening boss this one is. We also have the Bergenworth Overgrowth itself, it's the fluorescent flower. And we have the big smashy swingy boy, the undead giant with lots of lovely candles on his back. We have the bloody mama herself, it is Yarnum Thumerian Queen. And we have the one that we're painting today, it is the Thumerian Descendant, the double sickle crazy dude. And yeah, that is all the minis that we have that come with the Chalice Dungeon expansion. Let's just line them up so you can see everything that comes with it. There are a lot of minis in this one. It is a pretty big expansion and well worth buying if you're looking to expand your board game. So, like we have done with all the previous Kanehurst Castle ones, we're doing clean water, we've got our dirty water, we've got our kitchen roll, we've got the wet palette. It's the same again, it's the same shot, it's the same sponge that needs to be replaced. We've got the wet palette sheet, we're ironing out those crinkles with the card, and that means we are ready to paint. So we are indeed doing Thumerian Descendant today. To begin with, we're gonna prime him with some black, and then from there, we're gonna do some Zenithal highlighting like we have done previously. To do that, we're gonna get our little horrible old painting mat so we don't get our nice cutting mat painted up. We've got the airbrush, we've got the airbrush thinner, we've got the airbrush cleaner. These are the two things that I use to do airbrushing with. And I'll just pour some thinner in to begin with, then pop some white ink into that to mix it up, get it nice and thin so it spreads nice and evenly across our model. A couple of test blows before we do it. Then we'll stick our Thumerian Descendant onto our little makeshift holder. And then from a high up angle facing downwards, we'll start spraying on our white highlight onto the black prime making sure the higher up it is, the brighter the white is, and it falls off nicely into a darker, darker gradient. Perfect for doing contrast painting. So with our Zenithal highlight done, this is what our boy looks like. Pretty good to start painting with. So to begin painting, I'm going to use a Blood Angels Red contrast paint, which is just a really nice blood red, as the name suggests. And with the sort of under clothes that he has, like the sort of robe that sort of sits underneath the shawl. I'll just start painting up with this red. It is a really viscous and really strong pigmented red, so we probably will need to do some toning down a bit later on, but it's really vibrant and it looks really nice and it will make and it will stand out quite nicely against the other colours on this model. Again, you don't have to use this red, you can use any any colour that you want. If you want to make it a bit duller, a bit grimier, a bit grungier, there are lot, lots of good contrast paints out there to pick from. And then once I have the Blood Angels Red applied to that part of the model, we're then going to move on to some Snakebite Leather, which is a nice medium kind of brown color. And I'm gonna get that applied to the leg wraps. Then we'll move on to the sort of main separate color from the red, which I'm gonna base with some Caliban Green. It will sort of break up that red quite nicely. It's looking a bit colorful at the moment, but don't worry, we're gonna start toning that down a bit. So it's not so, you know, Santa-esque. So yeah, I'm just using that and I'm painting the sort of all the underparts that I've left alone with the green and the arm sleeves as well. There's lots of good references online that you can follow. I'm also following the sort of art that are on the cards as well. 
and the feathers on top I'm just going to tackle them with some snake bite leather as well just keeping that nice brown consistency and for the hair I'm using some apothecary white contrast paint which is a nice thin grayy light kind of contrast paint it won't react too well with darker primes but it does do a quite nice job with lighter primes and for the handles on the scythes sickles I'm using some copper color and specifically this fulgurite copper and I'm just going to tickle them onto the handles and once I've got those handles done I'm then moving on to the skin which is going to be based with some Rakarth flesh it's a nice washed out light kind of fleshy Caucasian -y tone perfect if you want to sort of make a sort of zombie or pale kind of tone I guess keeping it nice and thin so that it doesn't take away from the prime underneath then I can move on to the actual blades which will be based with some iron warriors and then for the green I'm going to add some shading to it just to sort of beef out those colors and contrast a bit using this Beel Tan shader And I'm also going to put that over the brown as well, just to kind of muddy up that brown a bit, add a bit more sort of, you know, texture and dynamism to it. Then for the red, I'm going to use this Targor Raid shade. I'm basically just going to shade all of the clothes just to add some sort of glossiness and contrast to it. And this is a sort of nice, ready, rich kind of shader colour, which will work quite nicely with the red. And some Agrax Earth shade, I'm going to pop that onto the feathers so that they get a bit of grime and a bit of darkness and contrast to them as well. Then I'm going to mix some Corax White in with some greys to kind of give a bit more strand interest to the hair, sort of like painting a couple different streaks and things, just to sort of break it up from the standard contrast paint that we have underneath, just adding in highlights as well. Then I can add some white into the Rakarth flesh and just start adding some highlights to the face, mainly focusing on the sort of forehead, the nose, the brow line, the cheekbones and the chin. Anywhere that's kind of like protruding and sort of pointing upwards where the light would bounce down, I'm just going to enhance those with brighter and brighter applications of white and Rakarth flesh. Then we're going to start bringing that vibrant green tone down a bit with a bit more muted green, specifically using Lauren Forest. And I'm just going to use that and again, sort of those areas that are sort of facing up and protruding more, I'm going to tackle them with a bit of this muted green. Just bring those tones down a bit, add a bit of extra different colour to it, just make it look a bit more interesting. And then I'm going to do the same and I'm going to use a very thin application of the Lauren Forest over the knees as well, just to sort of break up that greeny brownie mix a bit. And then once I've done that, I can add some Mournfang Brown, which is a lighter sort of mid-tone brown. And I'm going to use those, again, same application. I'm just going to use it to those sort of like stretched areas on the legs. And also onto the feathers as well, just to add a bit of brownie variation to it. Then I can mix some white into the Mournfang Brown and just start dabbing in some extra sort of brighter tones onto those feathers as well. Once that's done, I can add some Zandri Dust and I'm going to go over these sort of like edges of the brown parts as well just to sort of bring out those highlights and make them pop a bit against the sort of muddier tones that I have underneath. And basically just going over and over again I've mixed some Zandri dust into the Lauren Forest as well to give us a sort of like sandier greeny kind of tone which I'll use to highlight the green parts here again you're just making it pop you're making a bit more interest going in uh, sort of bringing out that contrast against the lighter to the dark as well which just always makes it seem more interesting and less flat basically then with that done I'm gonna add some Mephiston red which is a beautiful red tone and I'm gonna use that to add some highlights to the red part of the clothes as well just to break up that one tone that I have with the contrast paint and then with that I'm going to take some Zandri dust and I'm going to basically add in just like little pockets of details that go along here and then with that done I can then move on and add some Zandri dust to the middle as well basically doing the same thing I'm sort of targeting that middle area those kind of like little rivets I think rolls I don't know within that center part then with that done I can move back to the sickles, blades, sides, whatever you want to call them again with some Necron compound and just add some highlights to those metals. And with that done we're on to the last part which is coagulated blood which is what I absolutely love doing. And I'm just going to dab on some blood over to those weapons, make it look nice and bloody. He is a crazed bloodborne boss after all. 
And there we go, that is the first of many that we have for the Chalice Dungeon expansion. And if you did enjoy this episode, please be sure to drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment. And if you want to support the channel further, you can by joining me over on my Patreon, where we have lots of stuff over there, lots of behind the scenes of how I build the bigger models. You can vote on future projects if you want to do so, if you want to see specific things. I often do polls of things I'm going to do in the future. And yeah, it's just, you know, if you want to support that way, you can. And if not, that's absolutely fine. I just appreciate having you here today watching this video. And yeah, stick around because we have an awful lot more Bloodborne board game expansion stuff coming your way over the next few weeks. But thank you so much for joining. I'll see you next time for more Chalice Dungeon exploring. I'll see you then.